Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whether it be within the depths of the ocean, in a little bubble dome, or maybe you're circulating the earth in a uh, tin can. This is Ancient Mysteries Unearthed, coming at you live, well, recorded, but live recorded. And uh, I'm your co-host, Brandon James Sim. This is your content creator and host, Chris Noble. Chris, how are you doing today? Uh, Chris is great. Try not to laugh through your intro there, buddy. Yeah, that's uh... okay. I'm all jacked up on (laughs) coffee today. Yeah, um, me too. Yes. Me too. We're on a good vibration here. Good vibrations. So I got a lot going on in my life. Uh, I'm trying to record some auditions for some TV shows right now. But Chris grabbed my attention and said he might want to do an episode on dragons. And oh, Brandon loves him, his dragons. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm excited too. I'm glad I could uh, get you out of the audition uh, vortex with a uh, appealing topic like dragons. I think everyone here uh, listening and watching this episode, of course, uh, I think goes back to childhood usually with dragons. Uh, we've had so many books, so many movies, so much pop culture, folk- folklore, all these things with dragons, dragons, dragons. What a- I just watched uh, last night a Marvel film uh, that I'm blanking the name on now, the new one that came out. Uh, to get the uh, proper name for it, but they have a dragon oh, in that. Yeah, um, you wouldn't get it from me. I don't know. I, I'm as much as I love superheroes. Um, I'm I'm a bit burnt out on them. Um, oh, so, good. but but I will say, so dragons, much like giants, this is a a, a pan cultural phenomenon once again, uh, and it's something that you know, it's one of those things that I rem- remember when I was a kid, and I loved when I was a kid, but as an adult looking through the dragon myth. And seeing like the, um, you know, linguistics and seeing, uh, I don't know what the study of it is actually called, but looking at where, where language comes from and, you know, there's all those root languages, you know, dracon and dragon. And, and we see that there's a lot of similarities through the cultures and everyone has a story about these large serpents, whether they be winged or not. Um, it's very, very interesting to see. And, and, and it's a phenomenon that hasn't gone away. And we all know about the, the, the knight trying to slay the dragon. Where did your, um, where did your research start to take you? Was it, uh, are we looking at more historical or are we looking at more contemporary? A little bit of both, a little bit of both. So, you know, in today's episode, we'll show you guys um, sort of the origins of these dragon uh, myths, legends, and how they, as Brandon was saying, how they span the entire world. All the continents talk about uh, dragons in one way, shape or another, all, uh, you know, divided or, um, you know, sectioned off by time and geography. Yet here they are all talking about dragons and the similarities so we'll go through uh, in a sense like the sort of ancient historical context of of these creatures but then i have some really interesting video footage courtesy of one of my favorite youtube channels uh night god 333 check him out i will eventually have him on the uh, masterminds podcast as well uh, because he's got so much uh, phenomenal footage on his channel i do recommend you guys checking him out we're going to look at two of his videos uh, they're not his videos. He gets them, of course, somewhere else on the internet. So we're just recycling internet footage. But uh, it's really incredible stuff. So we might have dragons still alive and thriving in this exact modern day, which is pretty incredible to think of. So we've got the past and we've got the present that we'll look at today for dragons. That sounds awesome. Uh, I guess there wasn't enough knights to slay them all. I guess uh, not. You know, not not as many knights. So uh that and then you know we'll see actually right now what I'll do is uh, I'll I'll share my screen here and we can start to look at essentially this list of dragons that I just pulled off of Wikipedia nothing crazy cool. here and we'll start off in Africa and uh, you just see these different names already like the Dambala and uh, look at the symbol that pops up for this this dragon is literally just a serpent just a simple serpent here and so we're going to see a lot of that whether it's an actual wing dragon or um uh, apophis which is uh also uh, the god of chaos in egyptian mythology <laughs> no like pretty crazy i just was reading a book on that god it's uh itself and that is a giant snake or serpent in terms of its uh, representation you've also got the Auroboros, which is the tail eaters snake, which is a very ancient symbol that Mm. is for our listening audience, a a dragon eating its tail. This is an extremely ancient symbol of the cyclical nature of life. And of course, lots of other um, meanings and, and, you know, layers into this symbol, but 
that's coming out of Egypt. Uh, we've got this Groot slang, which is actually just looks like a massive big snake in South Africa. But uh, so so we've got it in Africa. Now let's look over in America here. Uh, we've got the horned serpent. Um, we've got, and then this is coming from Native American uh, cultures. We've got the un, I can't pronounce that, the unk secula uh, serpentine creature. I'm just glancing through. And when we get down to these European American dragons, we've got the snallygaster. We've got the thevetat. Now, these are all different. Some of these are not having photos come up with them. But look at this. In the Mesoamerican dragons, you've got Quetzalcoatl, which is a huge god uh, that the Aztec and I think the also the Mayans, but certainly the Aztec um, plays a huge role in their mythology. But they're coming uh, they're coming out here as, as dragons. And the well, Kukulkan, which is the Mayan mythological serpent, uh, Kukulkan, I was just there at... Um, at Chichen Itza, and that's the god depicted at Chichen Itza, the famous Mayan uh, temple pyramid there, or uh, temple pyramid complex. And so why is, you know, he's this um, serpentine dragon character. We've got so many of those in Mesoamerica. We've got the Boatata in Brazil. We've got Teju Hagua, which is uh, from Paraguay, I believe. We've got the Inca dragons, Amaru, which look at this thing is a uh, cross between what looks like a rodent and a bird of some kind with a serpent tail. Very interesting looking. And uh, we've got the European dragons. And I'm going to I'm going to come all the way down here to the, the Celtic dragon, because that's a very famous one, which is still in the flag of, of the country Wales. So yeah, that's like- this is this is recent in a sense that this still comes through. If I can interject, Chris, um, there's a book, uh, the Historia Britannica. It's it's like this ancient book about the uh, you know the origins of 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 Great Britain, and I think they go back to the Trojans and basically talking about Brutus, you know, fleeing Troy and looking for new lands because you know he was defeated, and if he was found, uh, it's not good if you're the war chief of a nation that's been destroyed. So they think that Brutus and Britain are kind of in the root of the naming. And in that book, they talk about coming to a new land and that there were giants and dragons, and they had to get rid of the dragons. So just very interesting that uh, once again, these history history books talk about getting rid of dragons. And this is what the supposedly again what I've what I've and there's not a lot of uh, the you know accounts during the Dark Ages in our history as as any as anyone would really know, uh, but there are certainly accounts of the Romans that uh, were you know that came to Great Britain thousands of years ago and encountered dragons and and also encountered giants as well and other mythological creatures that well we call them mythological of course uh, in these accounts they were not calling them myths they were stories that were very matter of fact and i heard in this and now i uh, don't quote me exactly on this but there was this famous red dragon which we see in the celtic um culture and of course on the welsh flag but there was also a white dragon apparently at that same time uh and the white dragon and the red dragon had some sort of uh i won't even know i don't even exactly know what their their situation was if they were rivals or or whatever the situation was but um there were these different colored dragons that ha- again have been acknowledged in different literature different um documentations throughout the dark ages in the uk in the united kingdom uh, and the island of great britain so yeah this stuff goes way way back we've even got um let's see here we've got uh peluda which is let me see if the image can come up here oh, i guess not but uh they call it a shaggy beast so this is coming from the french lore of dragons it, very different descriptions. You've you've got all these different look. Every single dragon we've been looking at here, we've got Germa- Germanic dragons, the Lindworm or Lindworm. Um, they all look a little different. I wonder why this isn't. Oh, there we go. But I don't want to see all that. Yeah, They're Chris, all- the uh, the the French. Um, I'm pretty sure the gargoyle was named after like it was like the gargouet 
or something. It was a water dragon that uh, was raiding the countryside. They had to slay it. And so that they wouldn't forget about it, they adorned some of the churches and castles with these structures of them. And that's where we get gargoyle now. And now the gargoyles mm. evolved since then, but originally it was a serpentine-like head. Um, just once again, just an interesting little tidbit. That's And these gargoyles a lot of the time have these... Uh what do you want to say? Almost like a, a, a mashup of different animals in them. They're like, you know, part lion with the head of a serpent or with wings or something like a griffin or, or whatever. Right. And we, well, we see this a lot. I wonder if that kind of like the Welsh flag is kind of your quintessential dragon. Um, yes. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's not kind of being like, a, if, you know, we, and I use the term dinosaur, so uh, if you think of when we say dinosaur, right, where, you know, you could have a pterodactyl or, or a, a, you know, a T-Rex or a long neck dinosaur. What would you do to represent all the dinosaurs? Really, what would you show? And what if you kind of mix and match them and kind of push them together to be like, hey, here are the different types of dragons. Just so you know, they all kind of have these features. Uh, I, I just wonder. That's always something that sparks my childlike curiosity. So. Hundred percent. So, I mean, as we're seeing here, I, I can, you know, you guys get the point at this at this stage, right? We've got dragons of literally all shapes and sizes um, coming from so many cultures. Of course, we know in China this is a very long-standing tradition and a mythological a mythological creature of the Chinese. However, here's something that most people are aware of but don't connect the dots to, which is why in the Chinese calendar is every animal that's in the Chinese calendar a real animal that exists to this day with one exception, which is the year of the dragon. And that's the year that I'm born. And I love that. I, I love that one. I always Why are this. you a dragon? I think I'm a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's, there's also some symbolic um, meaning to these things as well. Uh, and even if it's something like the year of the rat or the, the bunny or the rabbit, um, which maybe doesn't look as, as epic as the dragon, the symbology is really cool for all of them. And they have really beautiful properties that are worth looking into. Uh, but again, it's the question, why is there only one mythological creature it doesn't seem very logical that you'd have all those normal animals that we all acknowledge to this day exist. And yet here's one, we'll throw in one for this random year. You know, I, to me, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if that, I, I feel like dragons were, and maybe still are real, um, not only well, in real life, but to their culture. About them? How can yeah. they all talk about them? You know, like if you're from China, medieval China and you're from medieval Wales and you get together in a bar and you have a couple of drinks and you, you somehow speak the language of each other. And all of a sudden you're like, yeah, so dragons, right? And I, right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And we've, you know, dr dragons uh, come in many different forms as well as, as just a, a basic creature that you could come across like a small type of reptile dragon that you might see in the water versus something that is massive and flying in the sky that we would think of as a typical dragon. These dragons seem to be small to medium to absolutely massive in size. Some would spit out fire, some wouldn't, some wouldn't even necessarily have wings. They'd be more just strictly very serpent like some had obviously massive wings. So, it just seems that there is too much congruency. There's too much connection in all of these cultures as we've just been going through Japan and, you know, the Ryu um, dragon, which reminds me of a character in Street Fighter. And I wonder if there's any connection there. Uh, but That's got to be, I mean, right? who would want to name their fighting character dragon? Dragon. I mean, that's, pretty real. that's pretty awesome. So, Chris, uh, you know, I am um, in my uh, research on this. There was uh, the Ropen is this tale of these winged serpents that live in the Indonesia area. And they talk about them having kind of like a bioluminescence as in they glow in at night and they often come out in thunderstorms and stuff like that, but they, they kind of glow. And that would be something to me where I'm like, you know, my skeptical brain always is like fire. Do they really breathe fire? And is that true? Is that, is that the interpretation? Cause you know, once again, we're always like, this is real and this is interpretation. And there's always that line that we try and make to, to make it fit in our, in our little narrow box that we have as, as a society. And I think about bioluminescence and I'm like, you know, if you were to light up the night sky, um, that's like a torch, right? And you'd think fire. How could you describe that if you were in medieval Europe or something? Um, it's a really good point. Have you come across the fire? Yeah. Um, it 
really does depend on the cultures you're talking about. So the Welsh, Welsh dragon, that famous iconic Welsh dragon that we were looking at before, um, certainly in the stories, absolutely breathes fire. And that's where I think because of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and Merlin and all of those myths that have a lot more credence and I have a lot more documentation, well, a decent amount of documentation for the dark ages in which they were around for, uh, that to me, um, it was, it was more compelling than I thought. I forget the name of the researcher I heard on a podcast a couple of years ago, but he was deep into the King Arthur lore, deep into the lore of Merlin, Excalibur, the sword, all those famous stories. And the dragons that always get depicted in these stories breathe fire and are the, the classic, let's say, Hollywood style of dragon. But in these videos I want to show you guys today, um, you know, you're going to see potentially if these are real, which we don't know, of course, but you're going to see fire not only coming out of some of these dragons, but coming up fast, like almost like directed energy beam weapon in a way where uh, I'll, I'll stop describing it and I'll show the video and of course describe it to our listening audience as best I can here. But, um, and then like you mentioned before, Brandon, lightning and some of these bioluminescent creatures could be manipulating lightning. And maybe what if they weren't using, um, you know, fire, uh, spitting out fire, but what if they're shooting out lightning? And I know we're getting into some speculation that sounds like we're going into the Marvel universe or something, which I'm totally okay with, uh, but this is the kind of stuff that we're actually going to look in these videos that were, you know, their cell phone videos and obviously typical quality of that. But let's, uh, as I start to sort of well, set up yeah. these videos, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. You know what? So there was, um, whenever we talk about this stuff, people always look for other examples that we have, right? So if there was such a thing as a dragon, you know, that could exist, uh, we look at crocodiles, we look at, you know, these large serpents, these, these huge anaconda, um, things that still exist today that could represent that. So with the fire, there is a beetle. I hear that, uh, that is able to produce fire through, I think it's a gas and it has like a sparking mechanism it, it, and it makes like an explosion. Um, so there are some examples of that. We do know that there's bioluminescence in the oceans and stuff, and and there are bugs. You know, everyone knows what, what a June bug is or a firefly. Mm -hmm. um, and there's you know there's creatures that spit poisonous gas or poisonous uh, like acid that is corrosive. So there are examples in nature of things that have amazing abilities. And I mean, just honestly look at a cuttlefish or some of the octopi out there and it's like if they can cleave their dna and change their shapes then i'm sure some species have some uh, amazing um, abilities especially if they're from antiquity and once again these fire the fire you know it's i don't think it's just the the tongue sticking out that i was told in history that maybe the climate was warmer and there were more reptiles up there and they stuck their tongue out so that was fire i don't i don't think they would have you know, they were smart enough. If you can build Notre Dame, uh, you know what a tongue is. Yes. So. Yes. No, I, I, I love that. And you're absolutely right. It's uh, it, look at octopus. Uh, oct octopi are a phenomenal example of that. So, you know, for the audience here, check out anything to do with, with the octopi. There's um, one of the more conspiratorial uh, theories on where the octopus originally came from were not this planet somewhere else and uh you know when you watch some of these things and we we had a video on lake monsters one of the videos was definitely an octopi of some kind and this thing literally shape shifts i'm not just talking about the incredible camouflage that they have which is also like the makes the military like the military probably salivates over that kind of tech or they've already reverse engineered it but um but also the shape shifting like Sh changing the physical shape of these things. It's absolutely mind boggling what they can do. So why couldn't a dragon spit out fire when there's, we know there's creatures that exist that literally can change their entire shape and color of their body immediately within a second. And you know what? Uh, so we, we always assume dragons uh, and dinosaurs and all these kind of creatures are, are, are reptiles, but um, birds are very close to reptiles too. So, you know, I always wonder, but they're, you know, warm blooded all of a sudden. So that's an interesting little cross examination. And it would seem that dragons are categorized as their own genus of animals. So we don't really have a lot of information as to what they would be truly capable of. 
we have evidence of their existence, even though a lot of it's anecdotal. We don't have so many dragon skeletons unless they are dinosaurs. Right. Um, but uh, but yeah, we you know what could they be capable of? Uh, chameleons can change and regenerate, uh, change their skin and regenerate the limbs and stuff. So yeah, I would imagine that they were quite formidable beasts, anyways. But let, let's let's show our viewers some videos. Let's get into it. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I tantalize I, me, Chris. All right, so thank you, Night God three 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 again. Uh, this guy's videos are he's he's very prolific on TikTok as well. Check him out, everybody. Um, this video I'm going to watch in two segments. So the first part here is a gentleman. I think he's from Texas. Uh, this is where the video is being shot. I, I believe. I'm pretty sure. And he at first hears something. So we're going to listen to this cry, the, uh, this this beast like cry. Um, and then I'll fast forward a little bit and then we'll look at uh, an example of potentially electricity or lightning coming out or around this, this creature. And don't worry, the videos progress in terms of how much we can see. This one's the least visible of the three. So let's take a look and a listen here. Okay, so uh, I went ahead and jumped on my bike and I'm trying to like hunt this sound down and I can't find it. It's still like way off in that direction somewhere. Yeah. It's, it's coming, coming from, from so far back, back there, but it's so loud. If you guys can see in the background, we've had these really weird looking lightning strikes. Never anything like that. Right, right now, now it sounds, sounds like, like bearings, like... like and now here it's going to scream. That's so fucking loud. Dude, I need to call the newspaper and find out what this is. So that's the scream in a way that we just heard there. Now we're going to go back and play um, this part of a clip where we're going to see some lightning, some electrical, some electrical kind of mm, play at, at something going on electric. <laughs> well, those screams are pretty crazy. chilling, right? The lightning looked like it almost came from the possible dragon. I'm not sure. This is just a stretch, but. So he's going frame by frame here. We're trying to look and see where this lightning strike fog. happens. And it's it's quick, but once he slows it down frame by frame, it does look curious. Right there, you see the dark spot here? It's You're like... Here. Dark spot, you see that? It almost as if it shoots the lightning. Hmm. That is one hell of a charge. Okay. So this one, question mark. There's not a lot to see in this. Yeah, it was hard for me um, to see anyways. And uh, But it's 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 interesting for the cry. Like, I really enjoyed the, the sound that came from that where, um, you know, you could hear this like, I mean, what did that sound like, Brandon, like to you? Uh, it sounded something like a giant bird tell you the truth uh but i i mean i have heard weird noises in nature before that i can I can't ex describe you know and and i've been out in the woods a lot um living growing up in the country so you know it's it's not out of the realm of possibility that there are these things out there creatures that uh that just aren't classified by um by our zoologists and scientists yet so all right I mean, I and I agree. I agree. There's just so much we don't know. So let's take a look at this other one. Same guy, Night, Night God 333. Props to you, my friend. You're doing a great job out there. So let's take a look at this one. This is Dragon Caught on International Space Station live feed. I don't know if that's <laughs> I don't know if that's how that's possible because we're lo still looking up into the clouds. If that you know what I mean? Isn't the anyway? Don't worry about that, folks. Let's this see is, what we got. This is let's this see, is, let's this see is a footage. shot. Let's see the footage. All right, thank you. And um, without further ado, let's play the footage. <laughs> It's 
taking a leisurely stroll. Big ol' range of motion. Big range of motion. Very intriguing. I mean, see the clouds looks, move right there. It's like a winged serpent. Yep. I mean, right. it doesn't seem like that Here. space station with someone breathing behind it. No, it's obviously not. It's mislabeled. That thing's got to have a 40 foot wingspan. Right as we break to so commercial. I'm not the smartest perfect. guy oh. in the world, but. There we go. He's not the smartest guy in the world. <laughs> so, so that's pretty crazy. Um, and I'm just going to queue up this next one, but we'll, let's just quickly talk about what we saw there. This, that, that for the listening audience, we, you could see this, this, um, well, it looks like a dragon. This one really just looks like an, it's an outline on the clouds that um, looks like a dragon and absolutely to me flies what what you would think a dragon would fly like the flapping of the wings taking quite a long time for you know each uh, wing to flap down as you'd expect with a massive massive uh creature like that so i mean have you seen that footage before brandon i have not seen that before i've seen similar footage um of these winged serpents and and yeah like it the wings flapping don't resemble uh, a bird per se. It's um, yeah. I mean, it looks like a bat wing, really. It from, does doesn't from it? This, I mean, obviously the quality is not there, but this is probably sh being shot on an iPhone, uh, and it's likely a great distance away. Once again, it, I mean, it could be easily uh, faked, I suppose, to yep. half the 100%. commenters out there. We're going to have a, probably an even split for people who want to comment uh, yay or nay. Um, maybe you've had an experience too, because I, I know from a lot of people, there's the myth of the Thunderbird here in North America. And yep. there's a lot of people out there who, who say they've seen this massive bird. Some people in the, in the Americas... Um, in the States rather down in the Southern States, a lot of people say they've seen, you know, winged serpents. So something that resembles almost like a pterodactyl. And if that's not dragon like, I don't know what would be. Uh, and the wild West has uh, some old footages or old photos rather of, of taking down, um, you know, serpents with wings. So if that's not a dragon, I don't know at this point, it just depends on what word you want to use. So yeah, I, I completely agree. I, we're, there's just so many creatures, I feel like, that we do not, uh, we just don't understand. We just do not understand. So this is the last video uh, for episode today. And uh, this one is uh, from apparently 2011 in Japan. Um, we're looking at a um, basically a condo building, an apartment building, uh, maybe afternoon time in Japan here. So let's take a look at the video and we'll talk about it after. Absolutely amazing footage. Um, I've looked closely. I can't tend to see what created it but you can see it's there's a couple of suspected dragons and then apparently one of them um, I'm not sure if it has just the just absolutely amazing cloaking ability or what I couldn't see the source like I said but check this out this is really cool Okay, so they're driving, and yep. there's clearly something going on that they're filming. You can see right there. You see? Whoa! Whoa! Right. That was some fire. It has a couple different angles. Yeah. A couple different angles, which means there's probably multiple people recording this, which means there was something going on that there's day. Something. Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, wow. That... That looks like lava. I'm not right? Sure what else would create that? I mean, it's more or less a stream. Look at that. Man, that Look. was some Game of Thrones stuff right that's, there. Many that's three drive. angles, guys. Three different people filmed this. It's definitely shooting from the sky down, too. Yeah. I mean, perhaps it could be lightning liquefying something that got struck, but I didn't see a bolt. That's cool. It, it looks like a so lightning strike. I'm pretty sure... Oh, fire. That that's Whoa, that looked like... What was that right there? There might have been a few, a couple of them. Dude, what's that? 
Okay, we're gonna go back in a sec. These are all the more angles here. I'm not sure what could explode or or cause this. But okay, I've I'm many times you cannot basically see what whatever like the winged serpents flying around there too. And so we're back on the first video here. Check this out. So when the the creature flies from the right of the frame, right around here, you see those wings oh, yeah, right there? Yeah, yeah. yeah right. It goes behind the building, and right. then flying right out. And then it's the the sh this shot here of fire, but looks like a bolt of lightning because of how quickly it's it's coming out. Um, but it's definitely fire or lava or something. Wow. It's you can see almost here the the dragon. One of the dragons is over here. That shot of fire came from something else, some something whatever else. So there's Man. at least two going on here. <laughs> that looks like if I mean even today with modern weapons, that would be hard to handle. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> that's taking down your castle for sure. That's easily taking down a castle. You yeah, look, there goes something by like. So oh, we're seeing, you can see up yeah. at the top of this, this angle, you got something that's probably the dragon that actually shot this beam of fire electricity. I, what man, is that? I, it looks like magma almost. I mean, right? can you imagine? <laughs> uh, I would love to see the, um, I mean, if there was any, any science behind this, you know, and when we say science, I don't like saying that because science is, is, you know, it's always evolving and, and unless yep. you know, you know. But what would be the mechanical, biological structure in there that's doing this? It would be fascinating. Right? right? How are they producing fire, for one, and two, right. in a way that is, it, it, I'll say magic because we don't know what it is, but it just seems like. Well, what else is magic, right? I mean, it's just things we don't understand. It's yeah, abil if abilities I, that we can't understand. If I took a photo with my iPhone back in time and showed it to a Greek, you know, Herodotus or whatever, who also talked about dragons, hmm. uh, father of history. Yeah, that would be considered magic. He'd be like, well, "What is this?" Uh, very interesting right. stuff, Chris. This yeah. that was a pretty cool video. I got to say. I mean, whatever's going on there, whatever you think is going on, <laughs> something chaotic is going. On. <laughs> <laughs> like it's pretty. It's it, anyone who is witnessing this. Your life. Your life is forever changed. If this is indeed real, of course we don't know. Oh, um, I so badly want it to be of real. Of course, like, we want it to be real. I want to believe. Yeah, we we uh, well, certainly on this show. Anyone, of course, uh, and we get this in the comments. Of course, we're we're believers. Obviously, that's well, why we're yeah, doing and this. You know you what, know? guys? At the end of the day, this is for entertainment. Uh, you know, if uh, if you're taking it too seriously, then you know go watch uh, how it's made or something but uh if you're having fun then we're so happy to have you guys because that's what we're here to do and uh, and to explore topics that you know don't get talked about enough and it's fun i mean dragons we're, you can be a historical professor and only be a historical professor on dragons there's so much yeah. history on them yeah. so why is there so much history that's my question why yeah. what is the why out of all mytholo mythological creatures, dragons, I would say, are the very top three, if not number one, in terms of the amount of research, history, documentation, accounts, all these things. Well, you got like things like ghosts, dragons, Bigfoot that seem seem to just be everywhere. They're pan-cultural. As yeah. soon as it's pan-cultural, it raises a red flag. If the ancients talk about it and there's still rumors about it and there's cultural traditions that are still alive about it. Uh, I always, that to me, that's uh, at least a few check marks um, as far as, is there something here? 100%. Especially when we see it in art and like stone art, painting art. Statues. Statues. Engravings. Right. There's stories about them. You know, Alexander the Great talks about finding dragons in India. Uh, there's always reports of dragons in India. There's reports of dragons like Herodotus, like I said, uh, down in Ethiopia, I believe. He was talking about he'd seen the bones from the winged serpents and the locals there talked about how they actually inhabited the frankincense trees. And these weren't big dragons. These were, you know, like kind of sound like the size of chickens. And they're like, damn dragons, get out of my frankincense trees. Right. Which, but you know, if there was a whole genus of creature, uh, wouldn't that be something? And also, if we look at at the historical records of, of the um, the. Uh, animal records you know things were bigger yeah. back in the day so you had bigger animals and they're getting smaller now and the ones that are the bigger ones like rhinos and hip or hippos and elephants are having a hard time dealing with us humans as we progress in our chapter in this 
era of history. And I would imagine it would kind of be similar with dragons that the bigger ones would probably, probably be the ones that would also be more vulnerable to organized religion, religion, organized uh, society. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, like so. we may be seeing in these videos and those are massive, massive dragons in these, these videos, potentially, uh, allegedly, whatever, whatever the uh, situation is, but it's just so fascinating to think about. And that's why I wanted to do this episode today. Mm. So for everybody watching and listening, you know, thanks for tuning in, of course, and let us know in the comments, uh, whether it's the comments on YouTube or you want to drop us a line, the uh, contact information is in the show notes. If you guys listen to this on Spotify or whatever, let us know what you think about dragons in general. You know, do you believe that they are potentially real or are they strictly mythological? What are your thoughts? Have you had any experiences seeing anything, hearing anything about them? We'd love to hear. So please, please let us know. And um, thanks, Brandon, for, uh, you know, indulging me today on this uh, fun topic. Oh my goodness, my pleasure. And you know what, to to our listening audience as well, uh, if you have any other videos that are pretty compelling, drop the link down in the comments so that people going down this rabbit hole can continue, myself included, because I love me a good dragon tail. So let me know, uh, if, let us know if you have any historical accounts, any videos that might be out there, any tales, uh, you know, anything you got. Help us dig this rabbit hole out because I love this topic. I took uh, some serious time out of my busy schedule today to talk about <laughs> dragons with you. So please indulge us. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for doing that, Brandon. So uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Really, really appreciate it. Um, I'll let Brandon sort of uh, take us out here, but uh, thank you again. Thanks for all the comments. We're growing quite a lot on YouTube and everywhere else that we exist. So it's all because of you and we really appreciate all the feedback and uh, yeah, we absolutely take it all in and uh, we would love to see anything that you guys have to share. Please let us know video links, all those things. We love it. So thank you. And uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, you guys make it so fun for us. We love being here, hanging out with you in a way. Uh, maybe you're putting this on before bed and just drifting off to sleep. Maybe this is part of your morning run routine in the gym. You're listening to this. We thank you for your engagement. Keep the comments coming. Let us know. Engage with us. We love it so much. For better or for worse, we love you as our viewers. We do. So in that, I'll say stay curious. Stay kind. Chris, thank you so much for all your hard work and everything you do, guys. If you want to support Chris... For 33 cents a day, you can be an insider, join his Ancient Mysteries Unearthed community. We had a, a, a conference last night on it. There were so many engaging people. It was great. We went into breakout rooms and we met so many new faces and people who have so many great tales. I was learning so much. I was absorbing everyone's stories like a sponge. It was so great. Chris, thanks for putting that on. I encourage you to join that community. Support Chris so he can get deeper into these rabbit holes for us. Check out his music on Spotify as well at Chris Noble. And let's keep it there. And we'll see you next time on the next topic. Much love, everyone. Take care.